this is Kristen, and I'm here with Jim from Kentucky Reptile Zoo, and we're extracting from Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnakes today. So Jim is going to get started taking the first one out here. Okay. Jim would rather talk to you in person than be on video. <laughs> so each one he's going to bring out, he's going to uh, get a hold of it down here on this mat. He prefers to do these guys on the ground as opposed to on a table because since they're relatively big, uh, even though these aren't like the biggest Easterns in the world or anything, just their relative size gives them a greater strike range and he doesn't want to risk being bitten in the torso, so he likes them better on the ground. This one here is getting ready to shed its skin. So you might notice that it looks a little bit dull um, and that's the natural process that occurs, they get a layer of fluid between the old skin and the new skin that separates the two layers, and that gives them that kind of milky appearance. This one is also about ready to shed a fang on the one side there, you could see it had three. That's also totally normal, they shed and replace all of their teeth throughout their life. The Eastern Diamondbacks are native to the Southeast United States. They are not found in Kentucky, but their range is down in Florida, uh, the coastal states, uh, through Louisiana, and then um, upward into the Carolinas. But that's really about it. They don't come um, up as far as we are. They are one of the largest rattlesnakes. Uh, some people say they are the largest, though western diamondbacks are really uh, close, and we certainly haven't measured every snake in the world, so it's impossible to say which species is truly the largest. The record for both is right around 8 feet or slightly over. snake is really exhibiting a uh, thing that, that eastern diamondbacks are kind of known for, that kind of sideways, backwards crawling that it was doing is a really typical way for them to escape from something they're afraid of. Hi. They'll kind of uh, crawl backwards while still looking at the thing that they're worried about. So that's kind of what that snake was doing. It was attempting to escape while still keeping an eye on Jim. have a couple of snakes left here. This is the one that strikes the most. That's why he lives in the lowest enclosure. It makes it a little bit safer when we're working him. And snakes in general can strike about one third of their body length. So I don't know exactly how long the snake is or exactly how far he's striking, but um, he's probably around you know, five feet long or something like that. You don't think he's five feet? Jim says less. I'm just guessing. <laughs> All right. That's not quite Yeah, maybe four and a half. Yeah, maybe four. So, uh, People probably have also noticed that Jim has his fingers taped. Um, that's because he has some ligament damage and it has nothing to do with snakes. We're just trying to tape it to stabilize it a little bit. And he's also missing part of one finger, but that's actually from a weightlifting accident. It doesn't have anything to do with snakes either. The ones that are taped are because I dislocated it. Yeah, he dislocated the finger doing something, hitting it on something probably. Not having to do with snakes. <laughs> so 
this is the last one we'll be doing. This particular one is kind of flattening out its body, which is another common defense tactic that they have to try to make themselves look a little bigger than they actually are. Yeah, this one might be around five feet long. This video. Well, the cage, cages are four feet long, so this makes this one longer than, the, than that. All right, have a good day.